On February 24th of 2022, a white hat who goes by the pseudonym Satya0x responsibly disclosed a critical bug in the Wormhole Core bridge contract on Ethereum. All assets held by Wormhole's bridge contract were at risk at the time of submission. This particular responsible disclosure is yet another example of the immense strategic value multi-million dollar bug bounty programs have for Web3 projects. The flaw was an uninitialized upgradable proxy implementation which could have been self-destructed by an attacker. But before we get into the bug, let's first talk about why proxy contracts exist and why developers try to overcome immutability on the blockchain. Welcome to the Dark Forest. A smart contract that is deployed to a blockchain system like Ethereum is, under reasonable circumstances, expected to be immutable and tamper-proof. This is both a feature, promoting integrity and transparency, and a bug, preventing security patches and feature updates. Traditionally, when you want to have some agreement between two people, contracts were written up on a piece of paper, so that if one side or the other breaches the terms agreed upon, they can be enforced by a third party. Now, with the wonderful advancement of Turing Complete blockchains, we can have a smart contract which codifies these rules and mechanisms into the blockchain. The accuracy and integrity of the contract is enforced by the consensus mechanism built into these blockchains. Anyone can read the code of a smart contract themselves, and Ethereum guarantees that this exact code will be executed because the smart contract code itself is immutable. You can now safely accept sale offers because you know what the smart contract will do. The Ethereum network and all of its participants are the third party that help enforce the finality of history on the blockchain. Now, there may be changes you want to make to an agreement, like maybe changing an annual yield rate based on market conditions, or there may be situations which you hadn't thought of when the agreement was created, but you think should be added to the original contract. Enter mutability. Because each smart contract has access to and can modify variables permanently stored in a space in memory called storage, we can make our contracts configurable and enable certain parameters to be updated in the future if something needs to be changed. The logic itself deployed to the chain is immutable and can't change, but we can change variables we have defined in our storage. Open Zeppelin introduced a few different standards for mutability. Parameter configuration, contracts registry, strategy pattern, and pluggable modules. These all have their advantages and disadvantages, but none allow for a developer to fix a bug that was introduced in the core smart contract. Upgradability for smart contracts allows for changes to be made to the logic of the contract itself, which typically is immutable. If you deploy an immutable smart contract and later down the road you discover a bug in the contract, how should you go about fixing it? One nuclear option is to trigger the exploit yourself and rescue the funds from the contract but this introduces a whole new set of problems which need to be solved. Once you send your white hat exploit to the mempool, it's exposed to the creatures lurking in the dark forest, which can identify the hack and replicate it before your transaction gets mined. Even if your white hat hack goes through, you now have a contract which has been exploited and need to disseminate that information to the users of your protocol. This is where upgradability comes into play. In a Medium article written by Steve Marks from February of 2019, titled Upgradability is a Bug, Steve Marks proposes the following. Smart contracts are useful because they're trustless. Immutability is a critical feature to achieve trustlessness. Upgradability undermines a contract's immutability. Therefore, upgradability is a bug. Let me know in the comments what you think. Should upgradability be considered a bug? The most popular upgrade pattern is proxy contracts. Proxy contracts rely on an EVM primitive, the delegate call opcode. In Ethereum, there are three major types of contract calls. A regular call, a static call, and a delegate call. Static call is the simplest of the three. When you do a static call, the expectation is that no state is changed. However, when you use a call opcode, when contract A makes a call to contract B, by calling some function foo, the function execution relies on contract B's storage, and the message sender is set to contract A. Changes made to state during that function call in contract B can only affect contract B's storage. 
However, when the same call is made using delegate call, the function foo would be called on contract B, but in the context of contract A. This means that the logic of contract B would be used, but any state changes made by the function foo would affect the storage of contract A. There were a few standards which tried to use delegate calls to implement upgradability, but ultimately, Aragon and OpenZeppelin came together and popularized the idea of a delegate proxy pattern in EIP-897. This is the first EIP which attempted to standardize proxy contracts. The proposal didn't want to standardize the implementation, however stated, we believe there is a lot of value in agreeing on an interface all proxies use that allows for a standard way to operate with proxies. The standard introduced two functions, proxy type and implementation. Implementation returns the address the proxy delegate calls to at that moment in time for that message. Proxy type is the way to check whether a contract is a proxy at all. When a contract fails to return this method or it returns zero, it can be assumed that the contract is not a proxy. It also allows for communicating a bit more information about how the proxy operates. It is a pure function, therefore making it effectively constant as it cannot return a different value depending on state changes. The idea was to return a different uint value based on the proxy type. For example, an ID of 1 would equate to a forwarding proxy, a proxy which always forwards the same code address. ID 2 would be an upgradable proxy. This is a proxy whose implementation address can be changed depending on some arbitrary logic implemented either at the proxy level or in its forwarded logic. This is just one of the early standards proposed in Ethereum EIPs that allow for upgradability of the logic of a smart contract. Now that we understand how Delegate Call allows a smart contract to use logic from another contract to modify its own storage, we can start to imagine how we can make smart contracts functionality upgradable by storing the address we delegate call to in storage and update this value when we want to upgrade the logic. Nowadays, there are a multitude of standards. In the next episode of The Dark Forest, We'll cover UUPS and TPP proxies, along with the bug in Wormhole's contract which led to a bug bounty reward of $10 million. If you learned something new in this video, please give this a like and subscribe to show your support for this content. And if you're ready to test out your bug hunting skills, visit immunify.com and explore the over $130 million in bounty rewards available right now.